Good evening. Welcome back to Hellhound's Late Night Spook Show here on the Horror Metal Channel. I'm a Hellhound, and uh, as you probably already know, I've been redoing a lot of my uh, really early videos from when I started this channel back in 2015. Um, I sent most of those to private, and now I'm uh, updating them because uh, those early videos weren't very good, so I'm redoing them. And uh, I've been doing one per day, and I'm going to continue that streak. Um, so here's yet another re-review of an earlier uh, uh, video that I did when I started out. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at Sleepaway Cam from 1983, directed by Robert Hiltzik. Um, Sleepaway Camp is a well-directed slasher with an extremely shocking ending, which uh, I won't give away, don't worry, this is a spoiler-free review. Um, but, uh... Oh yeah. Love me some Sleepaway Camp. So, um, basically, what's it about? So, uh... As a child, uh, Angela Baker, played by Felissa Rose, witnessed her uh, family um, get killed during a horrific boating accident. And uh, eight years later, the still traumatized and slightly disturbed Angela um, and her cousin Ricky, played by Jonathan Tiersten, um, have uh, been sent to Camp Arawak by her eccentric uh, Aunt Martha, played by the late Desiree Gould. She actually passed away recently, rest in peace. Um, so yeah, Anthony and Ricky quickly notice that the summer camp is full of, uh, cruel bullies and just mean-spirited, uh, pranksters who, um, just want to ruin everybody else's fun. And, uh, Angela, Angela is constantly harassed, um, for being so shy and introverted, and, uh, Ricky is actually very pr protective of her. So yeah, Angela opens up to a, uh, nice fellow camper named, uh, Paul, played by Christopher Collette, and, uh, develops something of a relationship with him. Um, but meanwhile, a mysterious killer has been picking, uh, people off, stalking them and killing them. Uh, the numerous jerks who, um, who were, uh, responsible for, uh, tormenting poor Angela. Um, and, uh, so as the bodies pile up, it becomes apparent that anybody with less than honorable intentions won't be leaving this camp alive. That's right. So, um, yeah, that's the basic story. Behind Sleepaway Camp. Uh, so, let's find out why it's so great. On paper, this film looks like it could just be another generic 80s slasher film at a summer camp. Um, you know, uh, it contains all the, uh, you know, the basic ingredients uh, commonly found in this type of uh, film. You know, complete with the camp setting, the POV shots, uh, the... Um, obnoxious teens, uh, and the atrocious acting and dialogue, um, and even the token slut character, so, um, but don't just shove this one aside as another, uh, standard, um, Friday 13th knockoff, um, because, uh, as, as beneath all these, uh, cliches is actually a very unique and compelling story, uh, one in which, uh, I was actually, uh, invested in from, uh, the very start, and, uh, I was anxious to see how it played out. Um, and so, yeah, another element that, uh, sets this film apart from, uh, the others is the character of Angela, um, competently acted by the lovely, uh, Felissa Rose, um, and it's rare for a slasher film of this ilk to contain such a complex and interesting character. Um, yeah, I really felt for the poor girl, and, um, you know, I really wanted to see the ones who bullied her, uh, pay for what they had done, you know, I was rooting for her the whole way. I should also mention the mind-blowing ending which, uh, you know, is truly one of the most shocking I've ever seen. Um, you know, I won't give it away, you know, I won't spoil it, but, uh, know that, uh, it's not something you're gonna soon forget. <laughs> um, yeah, but, uh, all in all, yeah, this movie is truly something special, and, uh, I think it's a must-see for horror fans who appreciate a slasher film that offers a little more than just meaningless slaughter and a body count, you know. Um, so, yeah, um... That about covers it for, for Sleepaway Camp from 1983, directed by Robert Hiltzik. Um, great movie. Uh, highly recommend it. It's one of my favorite 80s slashers. And, uh, yeah, it was followed by a few sequels. Um, first there was Sleepaway Camp 2, Unhappy Campers, which, um, I've already reviewed this on this channel. And I didn't set that one to private, so uh, it's still available. So, for my full thoughts of Sleepaway Camp 2, check it out. But just to sum up, 
Um, Felicia Rose doesn't return as, as Angela. This time, uh, Angela's played by Pamela Springsteen, who takes it in a totally different direction than, uh, than the first movie, whereas Felicia Rose is a little more like, I don't know, maybe Michael Myers. She's a little emotionless and kind of cold and, uh, you know, kind of kind of creepy. Um, Angela in uh, Sleepaway Camp 2, uh, Pamela Springsteen's version, is more like Freddy Krueger. You know, she takes delight in, in killing people and even has some one-liners and wisecracks and just, you know... And uh, she seems to really have a lot of values when it comes to the camp and doesn't want anybody misbehaving or she'll, you know, she'll, she'll punish them for it severely. Um, yeah, far different from Angela um, from uh, the first film. So, uh, but yeah, I do recommend Sleepaway Camp 2, Unhappy Campers. It's not, it doesn't have a shocking ending, really. It doesn't have, uh, much depth or substance, but it's a really fun watch, nonetheless. It's more of a horror comedy than a straight-up suspenseful, um, whodunit mystery like the first film was. Um, but I still recommend it. It's pretty, it's pretty enjoyable for what it is. Um, I don't like it nearly as much as the first film. Uh, but it's definitely the best of the series, um, the best sequel of the series. Um, and, uh, then there's also uh, Sleepaway Camp 3... Teenage Wasteland, uh, which is pretty much just a rehash of the second film. It just feels like the same movie. Pamela Springsteen returns as Angela once more. And, um, yeah, just kind of the same movie. Um, there's not a lot of it. It's just, it's just like Sleepaway Camp 2, but not as good. Um, the kills are kind of uninspired, aside from a few uh, standouts, uh, the lawnmower death being one of them. And uh, it just kind of feels like a lesser version of, of the second film. It just it doesn't really add much new to the table. It's just kind of, if you've seen the second film, you've already seen it. Um, but I'd say check it out anyway, because it does have a few, uh, standout moments, you know, it's, I'd say it's still worth a watch, you know, at least once. Um, Michael A. Simpson directed, uh, parts two and three, by the way, it wasn't Robert Hiltzik that returned. And, uh, but anyway, yeah, Sleepaway Camp 1, 2, and 3, um, make up a decent trilogy, though, um, like I said, the third film isn't that great. Um, and I was really excited to hear that, uh, Robert Hiltzik, who directed the first film, was returning to make a part four, and, not only that, but Felicia Rose was returning as Angela, um, and yeah, so I was really excited to see Return to Sleepaway Camp, and then I saw it, and it sucked. I hate this movie. This is one of the worst horror sequels ever. Uh, right up there with, um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre of the Next Generation and all the Howling sequels. This movie just flat out terrible. Um, and yeah, if you're wondering why I own it, uh, well, first of all, I bought the DVD. It was a blind buy. I hadn't seen it, so I just bought it without watching it, hoping it would be good. And man, was I disappointed. I thought that, you know, Robert Hiltzik and Felicia Rose returning would have saved it. And, uh, but, uh, and Jonathan Tierston is Ricky, too, but I was wrong. Um, I was so wrong. And, uh, so yeah, I bought it without seeing it. And then, uh, when it came to the Blu-ray, um, a seller on eBay was selling all four of the movies, and, uh, but I already had the first one, so I messaged him and said, can I just buy, uh, part two and three from you? I already have part one on Blu-ray. I'm not really worried about owning, uh, part four, because it sucks. Um, and he said, no, yeah, I'll sell you, uh, just part two and three at, all, at a reduced price, but I'll throw in, uh, Return to Sleepaway Camp at no extra charge. I was like, eh, okay, sure, why not? Um, so that's sort of the only reason I own this piece of crap on Blu-ray. It was basically free, just... Um, thrown in with the purchase of, uh, parts two and three. Um, I definitely recommend these, uh, Scream Factory releases, by the way, of the, the Blu-rays of the first three. Um, cause yeah, they're pretty friggin' awesome. Awesome cover art. Awesome new cover art, of course, so with the, uh, original VHS cover on the inside. Scream Factory always does a hell of a job with their releases. Uh, they're just freaking amazing. Um, yeah, it's like that with the other two as well. So, uh, so yeah, if you're gonna own these, uh, definitely get them on Blu-ray, the Scream Factory version. Um, because they're, they own, um, so yeah, I the, uh, I've now reviewed the first two films, I redid, uh, part one, and I already reviewed part two, so check that out for my full thoughts. Um, I'm gonna review the third film, um, uh, at some point, I don't know, um, I know one of my viewers wants me to, so I'm sure I, I'll get to it eventually. I want to redo this, uh, review of part one first, uh, and as for my review, Return to Sleep at Camp, I'll do it right now. <clears throat> it sucks. Avoid it like a plague. Um, that's my review of Return to Sleep at Camp. Hi right, guys, well, thank you for watching my show. I'm Hellhound. Um, thank you for watching the Horror Metal channel. And uh, until next time, later.